What's going on guys, Nico here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the circle of fifths to make unique chord progressions that will make your music stand out. Here's the demo we're gonna break down and walk through today. jump in want to let you know i'm giving away a thousand melodies royalty free comment down below melody mastery we're going to select one winner out of the first hundred comments now jumping into the chord progression here that you heard in the demo how did i write it we're going to do a quick music theory breakdown if you've been watching this channel you may know this but just pay attention we're getting to the good stuff in a second so the piano has 12 notes that repeat over and over and over again now each one of these notes has a family of notes that we can use to create chord progressions and melodies from. Starting off, for example, with the music family of C. So the C major scale has these seven notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So if you're using these seven notes, you are writing in the key of C major or A minor. Now we'll get to those differences between major and minor later on in the video. I wanna keep going here with what's going on. So we have 12 notes. And on our circle of fifths, we also have 12 different slots on here. And notice again, the top one is C. Now I'm gonna make the first chord in the key of C, which is just a C major chord right here. And I'm gonna show you guys how this can now relate to the circle of fifths. So to make a major chord, I use the three, two strategy. I start off finding my root, which is a C here, first note in the key of C. And then from there, I take the notes, I count three in between, one, two, three, the next note, and then I do the same exact thing. One, two, and now I have a C major chord. So in music theory world, this is known as a major triad. We have our root, which is a C. We have our E, which is a third. And then we have our fifth, which is a G. Now what we can actually do is we can create another major chord and you'll see when we create the G major chord right here, G, B, and then D. The, G, the C chord going to the G chord, that top fifth is now a D. So we've actually, we can create the entire circle of fifths chord lineup. And voila, this is the chord lineup. The first major chord in each of these keys that goes around. I start mine at D flat major here and I work all the way back around to G flat. Now, how can we make chord progressions out of this? Well, what I like to do is find four neighboring families. Again, we're thinking about this like a neighborhood. So I like this area and region when I play on the piano. So I'm actually gonna get rid, rid of the rest of the chord lineup here. Now that we have these chords, what I wanna do is rearrange them. So I actually wanna start off, and this was done by trial and error. I said I like the C major chord, I like an E major chord, I like a B flat major chord, and an F chord. Now let's listen to this before we do anything complicated to it. So how are we gonna go from this basic chord progression to the one that I showed you earlier? Well, we have to break it down chord by chord. Here's the first one right here, the first C major chord. And those sound different. One of them sounds much more open, much more unique. So how do we get from the basic C major chord to what we have right here? Well, first I look at the notes in the more complicated chord and I see C, G, and D. And I know this right away that this is a sus two chord. So whenever we're creating sus two chords, we have to follow the one four strategy. So I'm actually gonna get rid of my third here and my fifth and go one, two. So I have one note in between and then four notes. And then what I have to do is I actually have to look here and say, okay, this is a closed sus two chord. And then the other one's much more wide. So I can octave jump this D up an octave. And then this is a G. I can make a duplicate of the lower G. Here we go. Now we've created a much more open and unique chord from our basic triad. So the second chord is an E flat major chord in our basic triad. So how are we gonna go from this to this? It's actually pretty simple. When I look at the notes here, all I see are an E flat and a B flat. So there's actually no third. And all I have to do is take these two notes and bring both of them up an octave. 
And what we've done here is we've actually created what I call a power chord. There's no third in between, so you actually don't know if it's major or minor. It's very mysterious, which is giving the feeling to this chord progression. So let's listen to the difference. No difference at all. So let's put in the first two chord progressions now and we can listen to these both. Next chord, we have our B flat major chord triad here. And again, I can tell right away that it is a sus two chord just from training my ears. So again, the way we create those, I'm actually gonna get rid of these two notes. Let's add the one, four. Yep, you, you jump this up an octave to make it an open structure. Again, open sounds great. And then we have an F here. So I take this note and go up. I'm running through this pretty quickly because I wanna get to the more interesting stuff with the chord progression rhythms. And our last chord, the F major chord, I notice here right away when I play the difference between the two. This chord is much more open and it's again using the power of power chords because we have an F and a C and then an F and a C. So this, that's starting off with our power chords. I'm gonna emulate that right now. Take this one, we don't need it there. And then we have a G up here. So an F sus two chord, it's an F, G, and then a C. So I'll drag this up here. And now we've identically created the chords. So the main takeaway from that alone is that you can take our circle of fifths chord lineup, find neighboring chords, rearrange them, use advanced chord strategies, and you create dope chord progressions. Now going from here into the arrangement of this quick loop that I showed you, we actually have four bars here, which we just duplicated. And then we have another four bars right here. And these sound a bit different. Let's just go chord by chord. And I'll talk it out with you guys real quick of what's going on. So our first chord in this right here, the C major chord or so this is a C sus two chord and we opened it up. Now, when we compare that to the next part right here, let's just listen. So we actually had a C sus two chord here in the first time around. And then the second time around, we had a C major chord. And the difference between the two of these is that we now added our third. So it gave a little bit of a different vibe to it. Going to our second chord here, let's just listen to this. So this is just an open chord with power chords like we did earlier. We listened to the second time around. And it's actually a sus two chord. Instead of just having the open power chord, which we have right here, we then add in the sus two element to give it that tension. And by the way, you might be noticing the sound is a bit different. When I go from this composition part to this composition part, I'm actually filtering in some of the different instruments. So if you just listen here, And then I have this one again right here as well. So not only am I changing the chord progressions, I'm also doing some little mixing tricks here to make these things sound a bit different. Now, whoops, going back into unmuting this, back to our chords here. So our third bar here in the first part and our third bar in the second part are actually the same. There's no difference. However, if you look at our last chord progression right here, the composition's the same, but the rhythmic patterns are a bit different. So if we just listen in, and you could hear that filter automation to the second part, and then we have the last bar on this four part. And then we have quick movements here with added melodic feel to it. So again, this is what it takes to make unique chord progression. So it's a lot of work, but you have a really great chord progression now that very few people will even have in their music, right? And there's some other parts as well that really add to this. Like I showed you guys the mixing tricks, the sound selections, very important, but you now have the tools to use the circle of fifths and create unique chord progressions just like I did. Again, follow what I did, rewind, watch this video a couple of times. It's gonna be worth your time because your chord progressions in the end are going to be fantastic. And just a couple other things before we go that you guys can be using in your music. When you listen to just this eight bar loop that I came up with, I'm trying to do a lot of things to keep the listener interested by adding subtly different elements in. You noticed on the plucks here as we went through, they started to get brighter and brighter with that filter automation. That's great stuff. Now, some of the other parts in here, I have a lot of white noise effects going on and cymbal transitions. 
and then I also bring in different percussion. So right away when I just look at the percussion by itself, all that we have going on from the beginning is a tambourine loop that I'm slowly bringing in the volume. So you can listen in real quick. And what I did here is when the tambourine loop came in full, I layered another wide tambourine loop as well. And I'm gonna get into mixing and a lot of stuff like that in more videos. Uh, I've just been really busy of late, as you guys have noticed that I've got my MIDI pack. I appreciate that. Should have mentioned that earlier. And then when I look at, I get rid of the, um, the actual percussion and we just look at some of the effects going on here. We have a lot of white noise and cymbal transitions. And the second time around, there's the only difference between these two is I added in this cashmere reverb effects clap, right? So I'm trying to do a couple of different things. And then let's see, is there anything else? Oh, going into our second part, when the kick comes in, I have these two reverses subtly going on in the background. So if we just listen in real quick, I'll play it with the bass. Actually, I'll play it by itself so you can hear it. Very subtle, but it really spices it up when we go from one part to the next. <laughs> And it's supposed to suck you in so that when the kick happens, it has a nice bigger moment, right? I could have also done some things with the bass. I could have filter automated it, it in so you didn't really hear it. But this is exactly what I did for this quick loop. So if you enjoyed this video, if you got value, like, comment, subscribe down below, turn on the notifications bell. I'm going to be releasing a lot more videos going forward. I know if you've been watching this, I haven't been posting that much lately. I've been working on a great project for you guys that's coming out soon. But again, this is stuff I haven't found this stuff anywhere else out there on YouTube. I want to keep providing the best value to help you make your music stand out with amazing songwriting and other production tips on this channel. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.